Welcome to our mini sod series, TMDSAS Corner, where we talk to TMDSAS staff about the application, how to get your application transmitted to the schools as quickly as possible, and how to make your application stand out in the best way. Joining me today is Dr. Scott Wright. He is the Executive Director of the Texas Health Education Service, which houses TMDSAS and JAMP. Welcome, Dr. Wright. Thanks, Enrique. It's good to be here. We have several questions to get you acquainted with all of our applicants and our advisors for this year. So let's just go ahead and get started with those. First off, could you tell us a little bit about your academic background? Absolutely. So I um, am old guy. So I went to college back in the dark ages before computers, actually. I used something called a typewriter for my uh, research papers and such. Uh, but I uh, was have always interested in history, so my undergrad uh, degrees in history uh, had minor in English, so I'm a liberal arts guy, and uh, and then I liked history so much that I went took a master's degree in history, uh, also, and uh, really enjoyed that, and sort of anticipated going and doing a PhD in history and becoming a history professor, but just didn't kind of play out that way. So started working in higher education and the administration of colleges and universities and uh, realized that that was where I really liked um, the skills that I had and uh, that was my interests. And so then I um, went back to graduate school and did a doctoral program in, in higher education leadership. And um, so uh, but I will, going back, say that the value of my liberal arts education was was uh, really stupendous, and it helped me to um, learn how to read and write and think. And I think if if a student, so as an aside, if uh, if a student is able to do those three things: read, write, and think, then uh, they can really do anything they want to do. Uh, it's quite possible for them to uh, uh, master anything beyond that if you have those three fundamentals. So that's kind of where I came from academically. Awesome. That's some very good advice for a lot of our applicants as they're filling out their essays and all the different sections. We'd like to know a little bit more about your work experience. Could you tell us uh, how your liberal arts experience influenced that and how you got to where you are today? Absolutely. Uh, So... um, when I was, uh, so I did a year of teaching, uh, many years ago. I taught seventh grade English and, uh, had a, uh, sort of okay experience with that. I enjoyed it in some ways and didn't in other ways. And, uh, during the summer after my teaching year, I had an opportunity to go work in a, uh, university and just for the summer. And I was just sort of working in the admissions office and, and that sort of turned into a full-time job uh, that coming fall. And I spent four years at Dallas Baptist University uh, working in student affairs and a variety of other capacities and had just a really amazing experience uh, learning a lot of the ins and outs of colleges and universities and how they function. And so that was a lot of fun. And um so I kind of worked in the admissions office some and then the graduate admissions office some, uh, in addition to a, a bunch of other things. And uh, then went on to uh, uh, become director of admissions at a small liberal arts college in Arkansas. And uh, that was a, a fantastic experience. And then when I went back to uh, graduate school, um, I was recruited to become the director of admissions at UT Southwestern Medical School and uh, because I really knew a lot about admissions processes and uh, how all of that worked and managing a process, and that's what it is. So I I did that for 10 years, uh, read, I estimate over the course of my 10 years at UT Southwestern, somewhere around 40,000 applications. And uh, so that was uh, quite an experience, interviewed thousands of students and learned a lot about what it takes to get into medical school, what it takes to be successful as a medical school student, and ultimately what uh, society is looking for in the physicians of the future. And that was a really amazing experience for me. I learned so much about people 
and uh, about um, how people think and how sometimes they don't think. Mm -hmm. And so that's uh, so that's something out that we can maybe talk a little bit about. Um, so I spent uh, ten years doing that, and then. I had an opportunity to go to UT Dallas, the undergrad campus, and become the dean of uh, the associate dean of undergraduate education and director of all the pre health, uh, pre medical, pre dental, et cetera, programs there. And uh, that allowed me to sort of use my expertise in the area of um, admissions to professional school in a, a different capacity. And so I was able to go and uh, really help the students on the other end of things and uh, had such a wonderful experience at UT Dallas. It was just so much fun seeing the kids grow up and come in as, as freshmen and, and leave and then go on to med school or dental school. It was really an amazing thing to be able to participate in that. Um, so, and then uh, I spent six years at UT Dallas and then in 2012, um, kind of got recruited to come to TMDSAS by the retiring director. And uh, so I was able to really put my experience in the professional school side of things with the experience in the undergrad side of things. And now I sort of work in the middle between the two. And it's been a, a really great experience here. Uh, I think I've really been able to do some things that have been exciting and and um, and so in, in this podcast is obviously one of the things that I'm su uh, super excited about. And Enrique, you've done a great job putting this all together, and and uh, it's been it's been fantastic. And so I hope it turns out to be helpful to the students. I really appreciate uh, your insight on that, and appreciate the kudos. So, considering your work experience both at the medical school level and at the undergraduate level as an advisor and associate dean. Um, what is your overall vision for the Texas Health Education Service, for TMDSAS, uh, not just, you know, during this application cycle, but in future cycles? Yeah, I really want to be, um, really want TMDSAS as well as JAMP to be, uh, to respond well to the students and their needs and also to respond well to the professional schools and their needs. We serve uh, both of those constituencies. So we really have to uh, balance between the needs of the two groups. Uh, and I think that those are not mutually exclusive. I think they're, that we're able to do that uh, to, to meet the two uh, together. So what I would say, uh, one of the things I would say about my, my vision for the future is that I want to reach out in, in new ways. So you and uh, the director of TMDSAS, Matthew Meeks, have done a great job even just recently uh, broadening our, our social media uh, presence, uh, which is uh, really important. We will this summer at some point be unveiling uh, a mobile app uh, for uh, Android and for Apple uh, platforms where we'll, students will be able to uh, do a whole lot of things from their mobile phone and uh, in terms of the application, in terms of their admissions uh, process to med school or dental school or vet school. And uh, so that's exciting. So really want to push the envelope a little bit in terms of technology. But I also want to, uh, to continue doing research on what do students look like? What do successful students look like who come in and fill out the application and then who um, are successful? And I think once we know more about what that student looks like, uh, and I'm talking about not just their MCAT score or their GPA, but holistically, what does that applicant look like? Then we can help the students understand better uh, how they can uh, look like that student and uh, how they can tell their story better in the application. We can also um, really focus a lot on helping the, the professional schools understand uh, what a student is all about, what, uh, in terms of their application, what is, um, uh, what does their story look like? What does the narrative of their life look like? And how does that play out in, in the application, in their activities, et cetera, uh, so that the, the professional schools can do a really good job of, of, uh, 
selecting students that meet their mission, that uh, fit what they're looking for in terms of their own uh, individual institution, but also what society is going to be looking for for the future of, of um, medical professionals and dentists and veterinarians. That's a pretty big, lofty goals, and I am I'm really excited to be a part of this team that that's really exploring the the modernization of an application system to be uh, much more of a service to applicants and to schools. Since you've worked both as, as an advisor and as a, as a director of admissions at a medical school, we wanted to ask you two questions. Uh, so the first one is, uh, what advice do you have for applicants at this point in the application cycle uh, and coming from the position of, a, of an advisor? And then if you were in the position of a, of a medical school or a professional school, what advice do you have for applicants from that perspective? So uh, that's a really super good question. And I think that the advice that has very similar, although there's a little bit of a, a, a different slant, depending on which hat I put on. As an advisor, I would say uh, really one of the keys is that you have to start early. Uh, if you're starting working on your application, as a junior during the summer of your after your junior year, then you're too late. Uh, you start working on your application the second you walk on that campus as a freshman. And so I would really encourage students to uh, look at the process that way, to focus in on what are you doing in the classroom. And this, this uh, also goes toward preparation for the MCAT or the DAT, uh, we often have students ask us, you know, how do I prepare for it? Or should I take this prep class versus that prep class or whatever? Uh, how many months should ahead of time should I start studying for the standardized tests? And my answer to that is always, you should start studying for the MCAT as a freshman, but not in the way that you think. You should start it by really engaging in your coursework in the classroom activities that you're doing, learning deeply, whatever class you're in, whether it's general chemistry or physics or English or psychology, whatever you're studying, learn those things deeply, engage in what you're doing, and that is preparation for the MCAT, for the DAT. That is preparation for uh, starting your application for developing yourself as a strong applicant. So as an advisor, I would say that the minute you step onto my campus, I want you to focus in and I want you to think about that what you're doing right then is filling up your application. Then you're going to wait three years before you actually start typing and putting things in writing, but you're working on your application. Whether you realize it or not, you're working on it. So you want to think about that and really... Uh, I think that will, will do you well if you'll, if you'll do that. So then shifting over to the professional school and my perspective as a former admissions officer is that students need to chill out. <laughs> uh, you know, you guys are so freaking nervous and anxious about everything. And I get that. I, I understand that. And a little anxiety is a good thing. It heightens our senses. It helps us focus on what's important and prioritize. Uh, but too much anxiety can be devastating to an applicant, whether it's in an interview or whether it's uh, in the, the pr preparation for, for MCAT or DAT or um, whether it's the first day of, of medical or dental school. Um, too much anxiety can really be so detrimental. And so I really encourage students to think about when they're preparing for the MCAT or DAT or when they're preparing for their interview uh, to professional school to really understand how to prepare yourself, not just academically, not just in terms of the questions that you think might get asked in the interview, but prepare yourself mentally and emotionally. And if you don't focus in a little bit at least on preparation for, for that, then it could be devastating. And I'll give you a good example that uh, there, there are students who fail to do that. They, by the time they get to the testing center to take the MCAT, they are emotionally exhausted. 
And they literally, I've had students uh, who, number one, I had one student one time who in the middle of taking the MCAT fell asleep at the computer. Not a good thing. I also had a student who threw up during the MCAT in the testing center, in the cubicle. Wow. Yes. Horrible. Mm -hmm. Uh, And this is all because of anxiety. This is all because they did not take care of themselves emotionally. They got to the testing center. They're super exhausted. And um, and it it just can be a real downer in terms of their ability to uh, do well on the on the exam. Same thing for interviews. I've had people cry through their interview. Uh, I've had people be so nervous that they they can barely talk, give like one word answers, or they just vomit at the mouth in terms of words, 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 words. And I ask one question and they go on for 30 minutes on the one question. And that's just as bad. So settle down. Chill out, breathe. Breathing is very important. Got to do it. And uh, so make sure you do that. But uh, really try. And I know it's easy on my end of things to say that, to chill out. Um, But you have to practice it. It's not just, it's counterintuitive. It's not going to just happen. You have to practice it. You have to do meditation or yoga or go work out or get out and watch a movie or go out with friends. Or you got to work these things into your into your background, into your preparation for uh, for med school uh, and dental school. I think that's some very, very sound advice on all ends. For our last question for you, we've actually been talking to several uh, admissions officers from various schools throughout the state, and we've kind of taken on a fun question that we'd like to offer them. Uh, it's our Mythbusters question, where we ask a common myth applicants bring to them, uh, and we allow our admissions officers to address the myth. Uh, so would you mind giving us kind of your favorite myth and offering the correct advice? Absolutely. I think uh, probably the the most interesting myth of the admissions process that I, I can think about is that everything's based on the numbers. And you've probably heard that myth before. It's a very common myth. Uh, now, to be honest, are the numbers important? Absolutely. Uh, you're not going to get into medical school if you have a 1.8 GPA. Right. That's just not going to happen. Uh, you're not going to get into medical school likely if you have, if your MCAT score is a, let's say a 480. Uh, probably not going to happen. Uh, or, or your DAT score is a 14. Uh, it's just not going to happen. Uh, so now having said that, what I would say is, um, if you have the perspective, that the numbers are all that really matters, then you're missing out on telling your narrative, whatever your story is, and translating that into words, into sentences, into paragraphs, in your application, in the personal statement, in the description of your activities, uh, in the optional essays, as well as in an interview setting. So All of this is really about marketing yourself. It's about developing a marketing plan for you that will highlight the best parts of you and that will enable you to sell yourself to the professional school in such a way that makes it successful. What you want when they read your application, upon an initial review of your application, what you want is for them to think, hmm, I want to meet this person. It's just like... What happens when Taco Bell puts a commercial together and puts it on TV? What what do they want? At the end of that commercial, they want you to be thinking, wow, I want I want Taco Bell right now. Yeah. Frequently happens to me. I love Taco Bell. But uh, that's what you want when somebody reads your application at the professional school. You want them to think, wow, I really want to meet this person. Then, then you've been successful on that marketing plan. And then you can go to the next stage of your marketing plan, which is marketing yourself in the interview and, uh, and, and, and really focusing that interviewer in on, um, the best parts of you, keywords, what are you all about, et cetera. So, uh, develop a marketing plan for yourself in terms of telling your story, selling yourself the best parts of you so that they want to meet you. So it's not all about the numbers. You are not an MCAT score. You are not a GPA. Is that part of who you are? Absolutely. 
Is it all of who you are? Not by a long shot. That's some really, really great advice. Thank you. Um, and we, we have actually heard that question several times, but I don't think anybody's ever compared it to Taco Bell. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, is there anything else that you'd like to share with applicants at this point in the cycle? Uh, so I think we're going to be having uh, a few more podcasts, uh, maybe on into the summer. Right. Uh, you and I will be talking with the students. Uh, we're going to be doing some podcasts that will help you prepare for uh, the interviews, uh, maybe what an interview is like, the different types of interviews, uh, and uh, how to prepare for them. So we'll be talking about that. Right. Definitely want to do that. Uh, we'll also be doing some, uh, a couple of podcasts on some more personal characteristics that are important to the professional schools that deal with uh, who are you as a person, uh, your level of maturity, for example, and what is maturity all about and what does that mean? And uh, what are the characteristics of that? And how can you think about that in a way that might prepare you for uh, being a successful applicant and being a successful student and ultimately for being a, su a successful person in life in general? Uh, we'll also be, I think, talking maybe with a couple of admissions officers about um, some other personal characteristics or what we could call personal competencies, um, whether they're interpersonal or intrapersonal or communication skills, reasoning skills, uh, nunchuck skills, things like that. No, I'm kidding. That was a joke. Uh, so we're, uh, we're going to be thinking about that, maybe talking about that later on uh, in the summer. And I think that'll be a lot of fun. Absolutely. Well, Dr. Wright, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. Absolutely, Enrique. Now let's go get some Taco Bell. <laughs> Make sure you subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, Google Play, or wherever you listen to podcasts to stay up to date with us. Follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash TMDSAS and at Twitter at TMDSAS and at TMDSAS support. On behalf of TMDSAS, we want to wish all our applicants for the 2018 cycle all the best of luck. Thank you very much for listening. We'll talk to you later.